God bless you, and welcome to the Defending the Message podcast. I'm your co-host, Pastor Jesse Smith. Our other co-host, Brother Amen, is not available for a recording today as he has had a change in his working schedule. So I'll be hosting this podcast solo. The purpose of this podcast is to answer questions some listeners and viewers have had over these last few months. And these questions sent around a few people that were connected to Brother Brandon's ministry. In particular, we're going to look at Roy Davis, Leo and Gene, the Tate Boys, and then we'll look at two other areas, plagiarism and the need to reevaluate Brother Branham's ministry. Over the last few months, I've had numerous people contact me with questions about the ministry of Brother Branham, and we're always happy to take any question by the grace of God because we believe if we have the truth that we're not afraid of any question. So I've noticed over these past few months that I've had some of the same questions come up. And then in particular, I had a phone call with a precious brother a couple weeks ago, and perhaps this brother is listening now, and I appreciate his sincerity and I appreciate his questions. And obviously the whole point of our podcast is to defend the message, which is the Bible revelations that God gave to his prophet, Brother William Branham. And so this phone conversation was perhaps the origin of the idea for this podcast. So I appreciate the brother calling me and asking these sincere, legitimate questions. And I tried to remember as much as I could about the conversation so I could share them on a podcast, and hopefully this will help out other people as well by the grace of God. Before we get into each subject, I just want to say that I've not devoted substantial time to studying Roy Davis and Leo and Jean, but it's not really necessary for me to do that. And the reason for that is because I've listened to many of Brother Ram's tapes, and we can easily search his recorded sermons to find Brother Ram's own words about these men. And I believe Brother Ram's own words vindicate him as being an honest, sincere man, a true Holy Ghost-filled saint, and also a genuine prophet of God. The sad part is a lot of these accusations against Brother Branham are based upon presumptions. Brother Ram's accusers are often jumping to conclusions. And it's my personal opinion they're trying to create scarecrows to scare people away from listening to Brother Branham, to keep people away from the Word of God and hearing the true Bible revelations that he preached. So with that being said, we'll get into our first subject, and by God's grace, I'll give brief answers about each subject, and hopefully this will be a blessing to you. The first subject is Roy Davis. Now it's clear from listening to Brother Ram's tapes that Roy Davis ordained him as a minister. Some of the recent accusations against Roy Davis have been that he was a leader in the KKK, married three times, had multiple arrests, imprisonments, many money laundering schemes, and many more evil accusations against him. These seem to be true through the limited reading I've done about his life. But again, I wasn't there. I wasn't a witness of Roy Davis's life and his decisions. But it seems overall there's a lot of evidence against him that he was an awful, evil man. And so the accusation against Brother Branham is, how could Brother Branham be involved with a man like Roy Davis? And the accusers would say, Isn't Brother Branham's involvement with Roy Davis proof that Brother Branham was not a genuine prophet of God? And of course, my answer to that is no, for a number of reasons. First, it's clear Brother Branham lived a clean life in all honesty and holiness. And this proves Brother Branham was indeed baptized with the Holy Ghost in his soul, and the Spirit of Jesus Christ lived in his life, and Brother Branham lived free from scandals and was a true servant of God. A second point is that it's a good sign that Brother Branham separated himself from Roy Davis. In one quote from Brother Branham from 1965, Brother Branham said he broke away from Roy Davis. He said, quote, that's exactly how I broke away from the missionary Baptist, Dr. Roy E. Davis, end quote. That's exactly how I broke away from the missionary Baptist, Dr. Roy E. Davis. How many ever heard him? Sure he did. You want to ordain some women preachers? And I said, no, sir. As an elder, I said, I cannot do that consciously. It's against the Word of God. So I looked up Roy Davis in the message software, and there's only 14 quotes about him. And Brother Branham rarely, if ever, promoted him, his lifestyle, or his teachings. So it seems to me that perhaps Brother Branham did not know all the evil that Roy Davis was involved in. It's likely Brother Branham did not know the full extent of Davis's wickedness since they weren't together after Brother Branham broke away from Davis. There's so many quotes from Brother Branham where he condemned preachers committing adultery and condemned all the sins Davis was guilty of. So Brother Branham would have never supported Davis's sinful lifestyle. 
And again, we'll never know for sure because Brother Bram's not here to answer the questions, so we don't want to jump to conclusions. And that's what Brother Bram's accusers are guilty of, jumping to conclusions. So that seems to be the most likely answer, that Brother Bram did not know about all of Roy Davis's evil habits and sinful decisions that he made. Another possibility is that perhaps Brother Bram knew a little bit about Roy Davis's sins, and because of Brother Bram's Christian character, he tried not to speak evil about people. There's numerous quotes from Brother Branham like this, where Brother Bram says, if you see your brother or you see a believer in sin, don't repeat it. So it's possible Brother Branham was practicing what he preached and not sharing the evil things that he knew about Roy Davis's life. But again, this is just presumption as well. We really don't know what Brother Branham knew about Roy Davis's life. My final point regarding Roy Davis is that it seems likely that Roy Davis manifested evil fruits after he separated himself from Brother Branham or Brother Branham separated himself from Roy Davis. And this would make Roy Davis more of like a Judas Iscariot type of personality, where perhaps for a time Roy Davis was sincere, but then did despite the spirit of grace and trampled underfoot the Son of God afresh, as the scripture says. And Jesus even talked about it in the parable of the four grounds, how someone can believe for a while, they can receive the seed of God for a while, they can believe for a while, but if there's no root of love in their heart for the word of God, they'll be offended by the word of God, and the seed of God cannot grow in their life. They'll fail to move on with God and eventually be lost. So I'm not judging Roy Davis's eternal destination. Only God can judge that. But based upon all the information about his evil deeds and evil lifestyle, it seems likely that he was a Judas Iscariot type of person. But we cannot assume Brother Branham was an evil person just because Roy E. Davis was an evil person. Just like we cannot assume Jesus was an evil person because Judas Iscariot was an evil person. We cannot assume guilt by association. Of course, the Lord Jesus Christ was the Holy One of Israel, the Messiah, God in flesh. So Judas Iscariot had the greatest pastor, the greatest leader you could ever have, yet he turned out to be a devil because he let Satan enter into his heart. And perhaps that's the same thing that happened with Roy Davis. Perhaps he had a good heart at one point, but after Brother Branham broke away from him, perhaps Satan entered into his heart. And again, no one can prove Roy Davis's eternal destination one way or the other. He's not here to defend himself, nor is Brother Branham here to defend himself. So I hope these answers have been a help regarding the subject of Roy Davis. I do not believe it is fair to make Brother Branham guilty for having association with Roy Davis, just as it's not fair to make Jesus guilty for having association with Judas Iscariot. I do not see any proof that Brother Branham was a partaker in Roy Davis's sins. And so, to me, Brother Branham is still a genuine prophet of God, a prophet who was baptized with the Holy Ghost, was a true servant of God, and it's sad for me that Roy Davis chose such a sinful life because it brought such a reproach upon the name of Christ. But Brother Branham chose a holy life, and that holy life brings glory to Jesus Christ. Next, we'll look at the subject of Leo and Jean. These were the two tape boys that joined Brother Branham's ministry and often traveled with Brother Branham in order to record his sermons. So the current accusation is that Leo and Jean were extremely wicked and abusive men. Now, the evidence I've seen on that seems to be true, that these men were guilty of abuse on top of other wicked sins as well. Accusers of Brother Branham are saying because Leo and Jean were wicked men, Brother Branham must have been a wicked man as well. So again, just like the Roy Davis subject, people are making Brother Branham guilty based upon his association with Leo and Jean. So my answer to this was very similar to Roy Davis. It seems Leo and Jean lived at least a clean life while Brother Branham was alive. We don't hear anything on tape where Brother Branham spoke evil about them, and Brother Branham did not separate himself from them like he did Roy Davis. So from the evidence that's on the tape, Brother Branham was supportive of Leo and Jean and what they were doing, making tape recordings, and then also setting up a park in Prescott, Arizona. And Brother Branham said positive things about them, that they were trying to lead the people to serve Jesus Christ. And this is all the proof that we have on tape from Brother Branham's life, and it seems to say that Leo and Jean were living clean while Brother Branham was alive. After Brother Branham's death, though, it seems Leo and Jean became wicked, sinful, and abusive men. And a lot of accusations are coming out about them. Of course, this is heartbreaking. All of our hearts go out to anyone who's been abused in any shape or matter. Any genuine Christian does not support any type of abuse. Brother Branham never supported abuse. I've never supported abuse. And no genuine Christian minister I've ever known in the message or outside of the message has ever supported abuse. So based upon the evidence on Brother Branham's tapes, it seems like 
Leo and Jean lived clean while Brother Branham was alive, but after Brother Branham passed away, it seems Leo and Jean let Satan enter into their hearts, perhaps like Roy Davis did. Therefore, Leo and Jean would fall in the same category as Roy Davis. They heard the seed word of God that Brother Branham was preaching from the word of God, and they believed it for a while, but after a while they were offended, and they did despite the spirit of grace and trodden underfoot the Son of God afresh. If God did not show Brother Branham the future regarding Roy Davis and Leo and Jean, how could Brother Branham know? We can't make Brother Branham guilty of not knowing the future if God didn't show him the future. Brother Branham only supported holy living. Brother Branham would never support abuse, domestic violence, or any other sin. So my conclusion is that we cannot make Brother Branham guilty by association. We cannot say Brother Branham was an evil man because some of his followers turned out to be evil men. Because if we do that, again, we have to make Jesus evil because of what Judas Iscariot turned out to be. But of course, Jesus Christ was holy, without sin, the Son of God, God manifest in the flesh. And so we do not make Jesus guilty by association with Judas Iscariot. The same is true. We do not make Brother Random guilty for being associated with people who eventually chose to sin. And again, I think the apparent wicked lives of Roy Davis and Leo and Jean are an absolute disgrace. It's heartbreaking. It's wicked. It's abominable. But that does not mean Brother Branham agreed with their decisions. And there's no evidence on tape that shows Brother Branham agreed with any of their sinful decisions. Because Brother Branham would condemn any of those sinful decisions. Just as the Bible condemns those wicked decisions. So I hope this brief answer is a help to those who have questions about Leo and Jean. And of course you can contact me with any questions or concerns regarding Roy E. Davis and Leo and Jean. The next subject is plagiarism. When I was talking with this precious brother, he asked me, what do you feel about Brother Branham and the subject of plagiarism? And I said, the accusation that Brother Branham is a plagiarist is off the table, in my mind, and in my humble opinion. I've put many, many hours into studying Brother Branham's teachings on the seven church ages, the seven seals, Daniel's 70 weeks, and the future home. And already I believe I have three resources that prove this. I have two YouTube videos that will be helpful to you if you haven't seen them. In the first one, I go through all four of those subjects and show how Brother Ram was not a plagiarist. The video is over an hour long. It's called Clarence Larkin, William Branham, and the Plagiarism Accusation Defending Jesus' Messenger. It's video number 85. It was released June 30th of 2021. And just last week, I put out a second YouTube video about this topic called Jesus Revealed the First Seal to Brother Branham. Not Plagiarized from Larkin and Russell. It's video number 131, released on November 25th, 2022. And the third resource is a podcast I recorded earlier this year. It was from April 27th, actually, 2022. And the title was Seven Seals Plagiarized? No, Jesus Revealed Seven Seals to Branham. So through the many hours I put into studying Brother Branham's teachings and also the teachings of Clarence Larkin, Charles Taze Russell, and Uriah Smith, I can truly say Brother Branham was not a plagiarist. Yes, it's true Brother Branham used some of Larkin's ideas, but Brother Branham plainly admitted it, as those resources will show if you take time and listen to them or watch them. Brother Branham thanked Larkin for his work. Brother Branham admitted to reading Larkin's books. And regarding the topic of the seven seals, Brother Branham only agreed with Larkin on one seal, and it was the sixth seal. Brother Branham partly agreed with Larkin on the fifth seal, but there were differences. And so there's no real proof to say Brother Branham plagiarized any authors. To me, it's clear the Lord Jesus Christ met him just as he said and revealed to him the true revelation of the church ages, the seven seals, Daniel 70 weeks, and the future home. Now regarding the future home, as I've already said, it seems Brother Branham forgot to cite Clarence Larkin, as there's at least eight exact quotes where Brother Branham was using Larkin's work. And my 2021 video shares that clearly. It seems very likely Brother Branham forgot to cite Larkin because all his previous behaviors showed that he was very happy to cite his resources. Brother Branham's accusers use one quote from Brother Branham in which Brother Branham said he got his revelation about the future home from the Lord. But as I showed on that 2021 video, in context, Brother Branham was talking about the divine revelation that the earth goes through three works of grace just as the believer goes through three works of grace. And so Brother Branham's divine revelation was something that Larkin did not teach because I've searched Larkin's work and Larkin never taught three works of grace, justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then recently, as I said, 
Last week I put out the video about the first seal. It is completely undeniable that Brother Bram did not plagiarize Charles Days Russell and Clarence Larkin regarding the first seal. On that video I showed screenshots from Russell and Larkin's books, so it's undeniable that Brother Branham did not plagiarize them. Brother Branham differed especially on the timing of the first seal with Larkin by over 2,000 years and differed with Russell on his timing of the first seal by over 140 years. And the identity of the writers were different and also the identity of the first beast was different. So there is absolutely no proof that Brother Branham was a plagiarist. And so we can believe Brother Branham received his revelations from the Lord Jesus Christ because they're absolutely scriptural, whereas the teachings of Uriah Smith, Larkin, and Russell sometimes break the scriptures. And Brother Branham gave us some of these revelations on the church ages and the seals with thus saith the Lord, and none of those other three men did. So we're grateful for the Lord Jesus Christ and how he revealed the true revelation of the church ages and seals to Brother Branham, who preached them to us, and now we have thus saith the Lord on these subjects. Lastly, I was asked by a precious brother if I would reevaluate Brother Branham's role or ministry. Now, for myself, I do not feel like I need to reevaluate Brother Branham's position or role in the body of Christ. I still believe, as I have for the last 21 years, that Brother Branham was a genuine prophet of God. I believe he was the seventh church age messenger. I believe he was the seventh angel of Revelation 10:7. I believe he was the restoration prophet, anointed with the spirit of Elijah, as Jesus taught in Matthew 17, verse 11, and as the book of Acts records in Acts 3, verses 20 through 21. I wrote an entire chapter about this in my 2021 book, The Twelve New Testament Mysteries Revealed, and it's chapter 13, called Elijah Shall Restore All Things. And in that chapter, I show six passages of Scripture that prove... God had to send Brother Branham with the spirit of Elijah to restore all the Bible doctrines and turn the hearts of believers back to the apostolic fathers. In other words, the true revelation that Jesus Christ revealed to Paul at the beginning. In that 13th chapter of the book, I show the historical evidence for Brother Branham's restoration ministry, which includes healings and discernments, the return of the pillar of fire, the return of thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Lord's statements regarding doctrine, Fulfilled prophecies and three prophecies in the process of coming to pass. Future prophecies with thus saith the Lord. Brother Ram's Elijah characteristics. And I show how William Branham was not Jesus. And William Branham was not a charlatan. And how God used Brother Branham to finish the mystery of God, which are 12 New Testament mystery doctrines. So I told the brother I was speaking with on the phone, I do not need to reevaluate Brother Branham's place. But I believe lots of people should, especially those people who are a part of the Tate Church ministry. They need to reevaluate Brother Branham and stop calling Brother Branham the greatest prophet of all time because they're essentially making Brother Branham equal to Jesus Christ. They're making every word on Brother Branham's tapes, thus saith the Lord, which is idolatry. They are guilty of making Brother Branham and his tapes divine. So anyone that exalted Brother Branham or worshiped Brother Branham, who was anointed with the evil deity spirit, yes, they would need to reevaluate Brother Branham's position and make him a prophet, but also make him a sinner saved by grace who was fallible. Brother Branham said it was Tamirat and one of the most awfulest things to make him infallible. And on the other side of the spectrum, I would tell people to reevaluate Brother Branham if you have considered him not to be a prophet. Again, and I would use all that evidence in the 13th chapter of my 2021 book, The Twelve New Testament Mysteries Revealed, and this is not a plug for anyone to buy my book. I'm not trying to make money off the books. You can listen to chapter 13 for free. I did an audiobook version of chapter 13. You can listen to it for free on YouTube. If someone can't afford the book, I'll be happy to send them a free copy. And the sad part about those who have left the message is that I have offered numerous people who've left the message a free copy of my books, but they will not accept them. They will not read them. I think it's sad and also perhaps cowardly that they will not read my work on Brother Branham's ministry, but yet I'll read their work and I'll listen to their podcasts and I'll watch their videos. So I think it's disingenuous of them to say they're dedicated researchers or, or honest researchers if they won't even look into the other side of the subject. They won't even look into my research and my Bible verses that I've used to show how God used Brother Branham as a genuine prophet of God. So in conclusion on this subject, I would say I do not need to reevaluate Brother Ram's position because God has vindicated him as a genuine prophet of God, an Elijah anointed prophet who finished the mystery of God, who turned our hearts back to the apostolic fathers. 
Just as Brother Branham said at the end of the Church Age book, his one goal in life was to nurture a true relationship between man and God. And that's what Brother Branham's ministry has done for me. It has made Jesus Christ a living reality in my life. And my greatest love is for the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. And every day I want to die to myself so I can manifest more of Jesus Christ in my life. That's the legacy of the ministry of William Branham in my life and in my family, and also in our home church. Well, friends, we've come to the end of this podcast. I hope this was a blessing. I just wanted to put out a short podcast with brief answers about the subjects of Roy Davis, Leo and Jean, plagiarism, and re-evaluating Brother Branham. I'm certainly happy to accept questions and comments and feedback, whether positive or negative. The Bible says iron sharpens iron, so questions are only going to make us more certain of the truth of God's Word. Now, of course, my time is limited, so if you share a question with me, it may take months for me to address that question. But we know God makes everything beautiful in His own time. So if we can just be patient and wait upon the Lord, the Bible says the Lord will renew our strength. And that's what I've seen in my life. I've been following the end-time Bible message of Brother Branham for 21 years. And of course, I'm human. I have questions like everybody else. But as I wait on the Lord, He renews my strength. He always points me back to the Scriptures. He helps me to avoid false assumptions. And just as Jesus promised, He adds all things unto me and unto all those who follow Him, who seek Him first, his kingdom, and his righteousness. So may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you. Thank you for listening to this and downloading this. I hope it's been a help to you. And may God anoint you to defend the message. Good afternoon, friends. Very happy to be here this afternoon and again in defense of the gospel of Jesus Christ to bring the good tidings, the good news that Jesus raised from the dead living among men today in church. The same Jesus that was 